that time is ending. Yeah. yeah. Your tomatoes and peppers are probably winding down, but mm. there's still time to plant. And that's garlic and onions. Yeah. You know, it great crop. Oh, yeah. You brought it to my attention the first time where when you plant onions in the fall, this time of the year, yeah. they actually have a better flavor, better flavor yeah. than if you do them, say, in the spring and, right. and you harvest them mm-hmm. uh, in, say, summer. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something where you, and it used to be you only could plant what are called um, onion sets. And they're basically little baby onions. Little tiny things, okay. yeah. Like, like Willie was holding up. It's like about it, like it, half an inch half to inch, half an yeah, inch, yeah. and it looks like a baby onion. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, where that's what you use. I don't like the fact that you can purchase a pack of seeds. Jeez. So actually, you're, you know, you're letting it go to, to seed, and then harvesting those seeds, and that's what you're planting in the ground. Takes longer, doesn't do as well. Uh, still. Our suggestion here at Bloomers in the Garden is mm. to plant onion sets. Don't plant, uh, don't go and plant uh, the seeds. And then garlic. Mm. Don't think that you can plant the garlic you buy at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. A lot of time yeah. that, that's California garlic. It's not the same garlic. You need to go out to your local garden center and buy your garlic to plant. And, and you don't... And, those novices, you don't take a whole garlic clove and plant well, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll get in. Yeah. We'll get into yeah. it. Not gonna work. You got to prepare your soil, like any good garden, and whether it's in the fall or whether it's in the spring, it all comes down to getting that that garden prepared. So here's what to do. First, soft soil is what you want because the roots and the actual. You think about different. Like, like for instance, growing carrots. They've got to go deep and they have to form that carrot. And if they're in hard soil, oh. it doesn't work. Yeah. Or they, or if you're growing yeah. onions and it's hard soil, they'll just pop up yeah. out of the ground and you, they, you won't have good success. So you want to have soft soil with good drainage. And what that means is adding bumper crop, bumper right, Olya? Yeah, the number one. That's it. And, and it's got to be mixed in the soil. Um bag covers about a hundred square feet and that's a two cubic foot bag if your soil is heavier okay then you'll want to do maybe more um you know or what i mean a heavy soil so that's a clay Clay. soil you've got clay uh certainly down here in south jersey they don't call it marl for nothing like marl (laughs) clay um and that the heavy clay will help add it uh all right I know, Julio, you're not going to know this. You are you're not prepared at all to answer this question, and it's going to be hard, okay? okay? What are the three elements that make up a good soil or a good a good loam? So I'll start you off with one that you probably wouldn't know. Sand. Sand. All right. What's bumper crop? Bumper crop is uh, compost. Or organic matter. Organic matter so yeah. sand, organic matter, right. and actually a little oh, bit of clay. clay. Um, scientifically, the, the clay ions are, were actually the the a lot of the elements in the the um, are is where that the nutrients collect to. And that's we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I learned something in school. <laughs> anyway, so you got to make sure that you've got a nice soft soil bed, and that it's not only going to help now. It's going to help later on. All right. So now, what about warm autumn soil? You've got to have a good about. It's probably about six weeks now. This morning it was a little chilly, wasn't oh, it? It was very much. It's going to go back and get a little bit warm. Uh, more, I think temperatures of the eighty in the eighty oh. eighty, I think. But I looked at the fifteen day forecast. It's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm just happy that the greenhouse heat won't be going on <laughs> you know, <laughs> as much. Save a little energy. But yeah, because yeah. it, it, I don't see, we still can get a frost if it's above 32, but I don't see freezing temperatures Coming up. and that the soil temperature needs to be warm enough. So 
So warm soil will establish a strong root uh, system. And, and you need to establish a little bit of a root system in the ground with your, your garlic or your onions before the freeze of winter comes in uh, and the crop goes dormant. So again, it, it's you're planting these now. They're going to grow for, for several weeks, depending on what the weather is. So they're going to grow probably into December or even farther, depending on how that temperature is. And then it's in the, they'll go dormant and then they'll start growing again in the spring. So they're getting a head start. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what they're getting. And that you'll, you'll be able to harvest them earlier than if you planted in the spring. Okay. We went over onion sets. Plant onion sets, not seed. Okay, they just do better. They're they're easier for you. Um, but how do you plant them? This is how. You're going to dig a shallow trench about two inches deep. I like that. Yeah, to, <laughs> yeah. You don't have to dig too yeah, far. It's like, <laughs> so you're back, huh? That's right. This segment coming up, we're having about transplanting your shrubs. That's got a lot deeper than two inches. So you, right. you put a, a shallow trench about two inches deep. Oh, yeah. And that you're going to line, you're going to line it. You're going to put a little bit of shake, a little bit of that bumper crop in that, only halfway, in that little trench. Okay, the trenches themselves, you, you're going to plant about. They're going to be about a foot apart. Depends on how many onions you're going to yeah. you're going to want or going to use. And that's one thing: the onions do hold pretty well. It's not like they all of a sudden rot like some of the softer vegetables. And then you're going to plant each onion set about four to six inches apart. Now you have that trench with that nice bumper crop uh, lining. And then you're going to take that onion set and push it firmly into the soil. And you're only going to cover it with one or two inches of soil. And if you can mix that bumper crop where it's a 50-50 mix of your soil and bumper crop, they're going to do tremendous. They're going to do tremendous. And then the one thing you probably didn't think of, you're going to mulch it. You're going to put about four inches of straw. And here's one thing. You don't want to put straw that has its weed seed. So so a lot of the straw that we'll get, it's mulching straw in that it doesn't have, it's, it's basically harvested before it goes and, and the seeds pollinate and therefore you're not planting weeds now straw is a problem so but there are types of straw like we have that tax straw that's for grass seed that works excellent and and that would be ideal because it's soft enough for the onions to pull through but that does not have any weed seed in it because it's like you're planting grass if you use the the type of straw that is used to say line a, a stall for a, for a horses or something along those lines like bedding because this they they have all the weed seed in it so it's one thing you want to be sure is that you're not all of a sudden finding grass seed growing <laughs> in your in your onion sets uh it can be a problem that's for sure so you're gonna mulch about four inches and what that happened is that that will compact. You also can use shredded leaves. I don't like using full leaves. The first thing I think about is, like for instance, oak leaves take forever to decompose. And then if they're shredded, it's going to be like a mulch. But if they're just regular leaves, uh-uh, don't, don't you don't want to do that because they, they will not break down and that, that it, it won't be good for your onions. It could actually cover your onions instead of, you know, your onions would have to make like a, a right turn to for the <laughs> for it to grow yeah. up out and and it's just not a good idea you can use regular mulch but just make sure it's very fine i'm not a totally big fan of that because you've got to turn it into your garden later i mean i certainly like the straw but without any weed seed any straw seed in it um, probably is the best because it is the lightest. It can be turned over into your garden and add some uh, biomass in there, and that it's just a it's just a good choice. So onions are easy. Onions are onions are easy. Onions are easy. 
you know, they're, they're going to grow about six weeks or so before, like we talked about, before they go dormant. And then in the spring, you'll be surprised on how fast they'll probably be growing before you get back into your garden uh, in the spring because they already have a rooted base. And again, it, it, they start developing, growing, and all of a sudden those onions, because you usually can see the top of the onion and how big it's going to be. Yeah. And, and you just let it grow and you let it grow. And the early summer, the leaves will begin to lose their color. They'll get yellow. They're not dying, but the, the tops are drying up. And then when they flop over, then it's time it's time for your harvest. Don't harvest them too soon. Let them do their thing. Let them get yellow. Any of you have grown bulbs? Next week, we're going to talk all about bulbs. But if anybody has grown bulbs like tulip bulbs or daffodil bulbs, you know that just like with the onions, that their foliage turns yellow when they're done. And that's what you have to allow those onions to do. And a lot of times you'll find that they've actually, when they're matured, they've almost pushed themselves out of the out of the soil that they've grown, they've grown, they've grown, and, and the roots are now, you know, below the onion, but the onion is actually almost level on the soil. So you'll be able to see, you know, how how good your onions look. But then you can't just run in and take them into the uh, into the kitchen. You've got to cure them. So again, you put it, put them in in the fall. You've let them grow. They've fallen over, but then you've harvested them. Don't make the mistake of rinsing them off with yeah. water. Do not air dry them. You're going to brush them off with. You can use a brush to clean off the soil. Do not rinse them with water. And you're just going to let them cure, and that they'll get that papery coating on the top of them. And you're going to air air cure them. Uh, you're going to do this, the same technique with garlic, and you're just going to let them dry out a little. You want that first leaf coat or the shell of that onion, okay, to, to get that papery protection on it. You're not going to be doing it and harvesting and bringing it right in, okay? So just be patient. Onions require a little patience. Yeah. They're really time. easy to grow, but just be patient. Let them cure for a little bit so that they get that papery shell. Most important. All right, so what about garlic? Now, you know, point the, the pointy side up, right? We talk pointy about that with up. bulbs That's all right. the time. It's like pointy point up, up, point up. So you're going to take a clove of garlic that you get from your local garden center that are meant to be grown in this area, okay? You're going to pull them apart. And you're going to, I hate, you know when you cook? Okay. I hate pulling apart the cloves and everything okay. and then, ugh. Yeah, yeah, I got okay. I got garlic that was already pre cleaned. How'd you get that? I went to Wegmans. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then what's best is they have them in a little pack of five. Oh yeah. So if you're cooking, of course, this is the you know, <laughs> Bloomers in the Garden Cooking Show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we uh, so what happens is that they have them already cleaned and they uh, have them in these like uh, these little packs of five okay. that are like shrunk wrapped. Right. So then. I have Take garlic, and, I, and it lasts for a real long time because all the air is pulled out. But anyway, yeah, so you're going to pull apart your garlic cloves and make each clove, each individual clove. Like, again, the, the garlic bowl is not a clove. That is where all the cloves are inside, and anybody who cooks knows that. So you're going to go and leave the papery coating on. You're not going to uh, gonna clean it like they did for my Wegmans garlic, <laughs> okay? It's going to go in with that papery thing that, that covers it all on it. And that you're going to do the same technique that you did with the onions, soft soil. You're going you're gonna to go and you're going to plant them with a point up and you're going to put them an inch deeper than the onions, okay? So about three inches down, all right, just don't remember, remember that. Point up, point up. Oh, he's all, point up. Point towards the sun. And you're going to put them about six inches apart. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to mulch them with about four inches of straw. And again, you want straw that does not have the seeds in it. Or you can, you know, one thing I didn't mention, for the okay. onions and for this, you could use bumper crop. Oh, yeah. You could just, you know, use that as a mulch. But you're going to, you want them to do... Bumper crop, I don't think you have to do as much. You probably do about two inches of bumper crop on top, and that would be enough. 
um, where there's not as much air space that there would be in straw. Just saying. So, again, you could do it with bumper crop, straw, or if you have shredded leaves, you can do it that way. And what happens is the mulch, it prevents the garlic roots from being heaved out of the ground as well. Because, you know, so, you know, we all know that, that the weather through the winter is like, oh, man, it's snowing. It's 20 degrees outside. And the next week it's like 60. 60. And, you know, yeah. and all of a oh, sudden, oh. you know, it's the, the ground Watch freezes rain. and then it thaws out and then it freezes and then it thaws out. And that in that type of alternative freezing, it can pop out pop the, up. the garlic. So you want to keep that mulch on top and that will keep the roots safe. So, again, um, mulching. Let's see. Oh, okay. Each leaf. So you only have one leaf, okay? You know how when you planted them, you left that paper on? When a leaf comes up, and that this is this is how it works, folks. Each leaf is one layer of the paper that's wrapped around the garlic bowl. So if you have one leaf, two leaves, three, you know, that's where you, you do that peeling and the peeling from. So a garlic plant with 10 green leaves will have 10 layers of wrappers around the bowl. It's kind of like, you know, how you count the rings on a tree? Yeah, same thing. Kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same thing. So there's no standard number of leaves that is, you know, you don't have to wait. You know, we, I need to have 32, 32 leaves, leaves before I pull them out of the ground. That That is not true. Uh, 10 layer, 10 leaves is, is usually good. Um, when the leaves... <laughs> The best way, it's just like in the onions. When the leaves, okay, start to die off and half are green and half are are yellow, that's when, uh, and, and that's when you're going to pull them out. And, and one thing too is the leaves start dying from the bottom up, not from the top down. So that's just something to pay attention to. Don't get freaked out that, oh, there's something wrong with my garlic. There's nothing going wrong. It's just, it's just what it's supposed to do. And that, again, you, if you want them to stay fresh in the pantry, and I know you do, you have to make sure that you cure them like the, like the onions. Okay. You let, have to basically let it dry out, and the skin will shrink, and it turns papery and forms that protective barrier against moisture and mold. So, again, a lot, a lot of information in this seg- segment. It's basically plant them in soft soil, Harvest them when the, the, the foliage begins to go yellow and, and die off and then cure them so that the papery barrier that's on the onion or the garlic is present. And then you can cut off the tops and then you can bring them inside. Chow down. Chow down.